Today, I have a good one for you. I have a Photoshop full edit tutorial where I cover the entire process from frequency separation, dodge and burn, and color grading. Now, keep in mind, this is more of an intermediate tutorial. So if you're a beginner in Photoshop, don't worry, si se puede con infante. I have beginner level tutorials that cover dodge and burn, frequency separation, color grading, and how to save for Instagram. Also, don't forget, I do leave a raw file so that you guys can edit it along with me. And if you're curious on how I took this photograph, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you follow me on Instagram because I have plenty of educational content on the strobes that I'm using, the lighting, and the light position. Now, let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. Before we get into Photoshop, I do have to cover the raw level because this is where most of the color grading happened. And if I leave this part out, people are going to be like, Este vato, I got the raw file and it looks nothing like it, man. It's puro pedo. So I have to cover this part. Now, what's cool is that you can do this in Capture One, Lightroom, Camera Raw, or even Luminar. But here, if you go into the color grading, let's look at my color grading layer. So if I look at my color grading layer, this is where I changed the colors from green to brown and giving me those golden tones. So basically what you need to do, whether you're in Lightroom, Capture One or Camera Raw, you wanna go into your HSL or your basic section. And in this case, I selected the yellows and the oranges and you'll see that I got the hue and I put it at negative 30. And I'm sorry, I meant the greens. I went to the oranges there. So I went from the yellows and the greens and I put it at negative 30. Now, one of the other steps in Capture One that allows you to do is that it gives me this color wheel. And I was able to select, if I take this off, you'll see that I still have some greens in this section. So what I did is I got the color picker and I specifically selected these greens so that I can capture them. And if you, if I hit this check mark, you'll see that these are, this was the greens that were still left, left over. Even though I put it at negative 30, I couldn't go any further. So I made a selection. And then, of course, I went in there and changed the hue so that I can get it exactly how I wanted. So as far as the color grading, that's how I got it from the greens to that kind of golden brownish look. And then I didn't do anything with the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Uh, but here you'll see that I did a little base layer. So those of you that are gonna, you know, curious about the exposure settings, didn't really change too much. Just brought the brightness up to two, exposure to 0 0.1 and clarity to two, and I don't think I did anything else. Then I did do a color balance, so let me just show you what I did here with the color balance. Added a little bit of oranges into the highlights, midtones, left the same, and then the shadows, I went a little bit more in this magenta. And then I went in with my burn tool, and if I push M on the keyboard, you'll see that I decided to burn the bottom part of the image just so that I could put more attention on the subject. Now, if I could go back and re-edit this image again, I would have burned a little bit of the sweater a little bit. Now, I did that in Photoshop, but if I could go back, I would have done it in the raw level, but it's okay, we'll do that in Photoshop. So this was the before and then the after just at the raw level. And if you're curious and want to know more about Capture One, I have plenty of tutorials. I'll leave a playlist in the description. All right, now that I'm in Photoshop, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my frequency separation and dodge and burn action. Now I know people are gonna be like, bro, show me the whole process. I already have beginner level tutorials. Um, I think I even have some actions on there. So feel free to check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this action. It's gonna go ahead and run my frequency separation first. And what it's asking me is how much of blur do I want? So I wanna separate the texture and the color. So I'm going around the image and I wanna make sure these flyaways, this is how I get rid of my flyaways in my work. And so I wanna make sure I have a good number. So I'm gonna maybe go, let's see what 22 looks like. And I also want to look at the blemishes on the face. So 22 looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then I'm gonna bring up this actions because it's taking up too much space. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the window. And I'm gonna first start off with frequency separation. Now when I do frequency separation, I always start off with the texture layer, meaning I'm gonna go ahead and fix the blemishes first. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the face. Now Elizabeth has 
pretty good skin, right? There's just a few blemishes here. So what I'm gonna do is with the texture layer selected, I'm gonna press J on the keyboard to get my patch tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection and I'm gonna drag it to a similar textured area so that it blends nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And so essentially that's all I'm gonna do here on this first step, just getting the patch tool. Now you can use the healing tool, you can use the clone stamp, the spot healing brush, whatever floats your boat, it doesn't matter whatever works for you. So feel free to use whatever tool works best. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just finish off these blemishes and then we'll get into the flyaways. All right, now that I'm done with the blemishes, I'm gonna go ahead and use the clone stamps. Sometimes I typically find the clone stamp works easier for me when it comes to the flyaways. So now I have the clone stamp. I'm gonna hold Alt and select a part of the texture that I like. And then I'm simply just going to fix some of the flyaways right here on the forehead. And then more importantly, we'll get to the flyaways that are on top, which are these areas up here. Now, the technique that I love the best is frequency separation to get rid of these flyaways, mainly because, you know, in my images, I usually like to blur out the background when I'm outdoors, right? And so because of that, it's a little bit easier to separate the texture and the color. So as I remove these flyaways, it should be a relatively easy process. Now, just a reminder, if you're curious on how I took this photograph, shame on you if you're not following me on Instagram, because I always post behind the scenes. I always post video content on how I'm doing every single photograph. So make sure to check out my Instagram for how I'm taking these photographs with all the settings as well and lenses and lighting, all that fun stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this process as well, just using the clone stamp once again, just so that I can get rid of these flyaways. And by the way, when I am doing these uh, flyaways, some of the colors, so let me show you the example before I fast forward it real quick. You'll see that I get this blotchiness of color here. And so if I were to zoom out, you'll see that it doesn't look right. So what I need to do is I need to go to my color backup layer and switch it to the mixer brush. You can see my settings up here. All right. And once I have that, essentially what the mixer brush is gonna do, and let me actually switch my layer so you can see this. Essentially what I have is I just have the color and I'm just smearing this color and smoothening it out because that's the color that's left over from the hair. And I just wanna blend everything so that everything looks nice and neat. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on everything again you'll see that I have the before and then the after, all right? So if you're doing this process with frequency separation and you notice you're getting blotchy colors, go ahead and go to your color layer, backup layer, and go ahead and use the mixer brush. And once again, if this is all new stuff for you, you're like, what in the world is he talking about? O to the M to the G. Check out my beginner level tutorial on frequency separation where I go more in detail. All right, now that I'm done with the flyaways and the blemishes, I'm just gonna double check one more time. Looks like everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the assist layers, which is basically a black and white layer, just so I can see the tonal inconsistencies. And so I'm still with frequency separation. I have my color backup layer selected, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the mixer brush to just smoothen out some of the tonal inconsistencies. So here I'm looking at the forehead here. So not the forehead, but a little bit on to the side right here. I see that it's a little bit brighter than it is over here. So I might darken this part up in a little bit and then smoothen this part out. So this takes time in order for you to kind of see the areas that you might want to adjust. Now, these are just minor things. I'm trying not to overdo it here. I'm just gonna go real nice and soft and just try and smoothen out just a little bit of this, just so that it can make it a little bit faster for me when I do get into dodge and burn. And so I'm trying to give myself a little bit less work. So I'm. This part here, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. I got the lasso tool and I'm just making a selection. And I have about 
percent feather. And what I want to do is I want to blur this color. Remember, I have the color layer selected, right? And I want to blur this color to kind of even things out. So I'm going to go to blur and then Gaussian blur. And if we zoom in here, let me see if I can get there. Oh my gosh, what is going on? There we go. We'll just leave it like that for now. And if I hit the preview before and then after, you'll see right here that it's just evening out some of the color there. So I'm going to leave it at 24.5. That seemed to work fine for me. I'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm going to go filter, Gaussian blur, leave the same settings. I'm going to deselect it. And same thing, I'm just going to keep going around with my mixer brush, just evening out a little bit of this. Once again, I don't want to get too cute with this because I can do it with dodge and burn, but just trying to give myself a little bit less work. So if I zoom out, let me bump that up just a little bit there, bring this across a little bit more. It's almost like you're just massaging this color. I'm just doing like subtle clicks, not trying to drag too far. And there we go. So let's see, this is the before and then the after. I think that looks great. And I'm still gonna get into dodge and burn. So every time I do that, anytime I do this, I always bring down my opacity just in case I decided to get too cute. So I'm gonna bring it about 85 percent to just give me that little bit of flexibility so once again the before and then the after before and then the after so i'm done with frequency separation i'm gonna go ahead and collapse this now i'm gonna get into my dodge and burn section and i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my black and white helper layer i'm gonna get my brush tool i'm gonna make sure i have my settings set up so i'm gonna get my todo al pedo alv and we got opacity 75% and we got the flow at 1%. So now is the part where I'm gonna go in here and manually brush in exposure where I feel like areas need to be brightened or darkened. So Dodge is gonna brighten up certain areas and I have my little tablet here and I'm just simply going in here and slowly brightening up little section. So even with just that one little section there, so if I hold alt on this layer mask, you'll see that that's where I dodge, where it's in white. And if I hit the eyeball, you'll see that that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the tonal inconsistencies. It does take time to kind of see exactly where you need to make these adjustments. I know the common question I'll probably get in the comments is, well, how do I know where you're supposed to dodge and burn? It just takes a lot of practice. I wish there was like a cheat code. Well, actually, you know what? There is a cheat code. There is uh, plugins. I've been using a plugin lately. It's called Retouch for me. I just did a review on it, which was my last video. So those of you that are looking at this dodge and burn, you're like, man, I don't got time to do this. What's wrong with you, bro? I got client work to do. I don't got time to act cute and spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes doing dodge and burn. What's wrong with you? Take a look at my Retouch for me review. There's also a code there. And so I've been using that on my client work. Oh my gosh, it's been saving me time. The people that have purchased it, that have seen that video, absolutely love it. So I'll leave a link into the description on that. So those of you that want maybe a faster way of doing dodge and burn, it's a great resource. I highly recommend it for anybody that's doing high volume work or that just wants to speed up their editing workflow because maybe they're stressed out with client work. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part here. I'm just going to simply do the dodge and burn where I see fit, and then we'll get into the global dodge and burn. Now I've done a little bit of dodge and burn, but sometimes it's difficult to see exactly where to dodge and burn. So I've reset my contrast helper layer, and I'm gonna get the little, uh, what is this tool called? The click and drag image to modify curve, right? And so I'm gonna find a bright area, I'm gonna drag it up, so I can raise up the highlights and I'm gonna find like a shadowed area and then drag that down. So I get a little bit more details as to where I need to dodge and burn. So this has given me a little bit more guidance and now I'm gonna continue doing my dodge and burn. All right, so let's see what I've done so far. I'm gonna zoom in on the face here. Let's hold alt on the dodge. So you can see exactly where I've dodged and where I've burned. 
and just the before and after of the dodge and burn. Okay. And so now what I want to do is let's go ahead, let's, you know, let's focus on the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And then I'm going to get to the shirt. We talked about that when I was at the raw level. Um, I didn't, in the original edit, I didn't darken up the shirt because it's white and I'm using off-camera flash and strobe. It tends to um, be a little bit brighter than it needs to be because uh, the light is reflecting off of that. So I raised up my opacity. When I'm getting to these eyes, I want to make sure it's nice and bright. And I'm going to come over here, same thing, just brightening up the eye just ever so slightly. Okay. And now I'm going to turn off the helper layer and you'll see that I want to bring back a little bit more detail there. So I'm going to get my burn because that's what darkens, like just brushing in some uh, exposure and decreasing it. So I'm just darkening it up ever so slightly. Still have my brush set to 3% flow as I'm darkening this because I don't want my eyes to be distracted and going to the sweater. And so just going in here and once again, just darkening it up just a little bit. And so let's take a look at this. You'll see even here with the mask, you'll see this is where I've darkened. And so this is before and then the after, perfect. And so let's look at the overall once again, before and after. So it's looking great so far. I'm gonna add another dodge and burn layer. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do global dodge and burn. And this is going to give me a little bit more depth to my image. So now that I have my new dodge layer, I'm gonna change my settings. I'm gonna leave 75% opacity, but this time my flow is gonna be at four. And you'll see that I got a little bit of light on the lips. So nice little bit of gloss. I'm gonna enhance that and brighten that up. And I'm just trying to brighten up and darken the areas that are already dark. And this is what gives me that three-dimensional look. So I'm going to just darken it up just a little bit there. Same thing on the nose. Okay. I'm going to come back to dodge. And I'm going to brighten up these areas. Now, this step is crucial. This is a step that, once again, makes the image pop. And it gives it that glow and I'm going to brighten it up here on the forehead a little bit, darken up the cheek underneath the shadow over here, even this area back here, the hands in here, darken it underneath here as well. And I'm even going to go into the hair and find the areas that I want to give it just a little bit more glow. And I'm making sure that I'm doing it to the areas that already have highlights. I'm not trying to brighten up areas that are already dark. I'm brightening and darkening with this global, the areas that are already dark. All right, so I'm just going to do this just a little bit more. I'm almost done with my global here. And so let me put this in a group. I'm selecting them both by holding shift and then pressing control G to group. And I'm going to go ahead and name this global. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the before and then the after. So this is just a global. All right. So if we look, this is the before and then the after. And let's look at the overall before and after of the frequency separation and the dodge and burn. So before and then the after. Now, just like I mentioned before with the frequency separation, when it comes to global, I don't want to overdo it. So I'm simply going to just reduce my opacity to about 85, just in case I went a little bit overboard there. All right, so now that we're done with the skin retouching, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the color grading. For the color grading, I used a lot of selective color. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the frequency separation and dodge and burn. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go into selective color. Now the main ones I like to use is the reds, the yellows, and that's because of the skin tone. So the first one that I started off with was, was the red. So I went negative three here. And then on the magentas, I went to two and then the three. All right. Now, in my opinion, selective color is the easiest to color grade an image. And if you want to know more about frequency separation, frequency separation, what am I talking about? <laughs> selective color. I do have a tutorial that specifically talks about selective color. Now, the reason why I'm controlling reds and yellows is that that's where the skin tone lies on, right? And so I've made these subtle adjustments and tweaks. 
Then I also went into the neutrals, which is like my mid-tones. And I did increase the magentas, yellows, and, br and blacks to the right by just adding plus one. So that was my selective color just for, this, just for the skin tone. So if I zoom in, you're probably not going to see much of a difference. It's very subtle, but let's see if you'll see a difference here. Oh, yeah, you'll see a subtle difference. Just adds a nice little bit of red tones into the skin. And then I do have an action where it's selective color, but now what it does is that it's going to make a mask and it's going to specifically allow me to color grade the background. And so as this is running, what I wanted is that I wanted the reds to be a little bit more rich. So you'll see after I run this action, the selective color background layer, I hold alt. You'll see what's in white is what's going to be color graded. Now, if you're interested in my actions, I do have a link in the description. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch it to the reds. I'm going to go negative one here. I'm going to go three. Let me go ahead and zoom out. Let's go right about here so you guys can see as I'm color grading. We go three. And then five. And then I really went strong on the blacks. I went 27, which is the dark areas, right? And so this is the before and the after. Just adding an, a little bit of depth to the image, especially with that 27. Now that I'm done with the selective color, what I did next is my raw vato loco, which is basically just merging all the layers together and making it into a smart object. And the reason why I love doing this is that I love going back into the camera raw settings. And this also gives me that flexibility of changing it if I want to by making it into a smart object. So what you'll see here is that I got my camera raw filter already set up here and set, have it set up as a smart filter. So now I'm gonna go ahead and double click here. And what I'm going to do is I've already saved this preset. We're just going to quickly look at the preset settings that I added. Now, each image is very similar to what I typically do, but let's just look at the settings. Maybe this is your first video that you're watching. And if this is your first video, I do have, I don't know, man, over 15 full edit tutorials. I, I don't even know at this point, but I have a bunch of them. So I do have it down here. So let me see if I can get there. There you go. It says right here, Elizabeth YouTube preset. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And hopefully it'll work because right now my computer is going crazy. And so I'm gonna select that and hopefully it'll allow me to get that preset, okay? And so I'm gonna try it one, one more time. I'm having some technical difficulties over here. And let me see if I can get this working. I'm gonna try it one more time. There we go. And is it working? There you go. And so, as you can see here, I just added a little bit of contrast by one. If I wanted to, I could add, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit more contrast. Sometimes when I'm seeing this image for the second time, I feel like a little bit more contrast would help. So in this case, I added three this time now. I brought up the blacks, texture and clarity to two, and then brought the vibrance down to negative two. Didn't do anything here. Did a little bit of sharpening. And then here, the hue, this one's very important. The HSL and the hue... This is where I'm also getting a little bit more richer skin tones by going negative four and negative two and the yellows. Because once again, this, you know, strictly relies on the skin tone, but also the image. This image is very heavy with the browns and the reds that I've been adding into this image. So that, that step is very important here. Saturation brought the oranges down to negative one. And then the luminance, which is in the skin tone, the oranges brightened it up to plus two. Then in my color grading, in my shadows, I added just a little bit of this kind of um, maroon red, and I added it at two. And then in my highlights, adding a little bit of the blues to cool off some of those reds, so I put it at seven. Then I got into the grain and the vignetting. So I love to add grain, especially when I'm doing my skin retouching. I wanna make sure that the skin doesn't look too soft, so I like to add a little bit of grain to it. So I added 15. And then, of course, my calibration. You kind of have to tweak and play around with these settings here. This is very powerful. You can do a lot of cool color grading to it. But I typically try to keep my numbers, um, usually at this step, not exceeding over five. Unless there's a specific image where it's like, oh, my gosh, I really need to push it. In this case, the image was already looking great. So that was at what I did at the camera raw level. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK so I can apply that. And then what I did next is I did a gradient map. So I do have an action. Now I know somebody's gonna get mad. Hey man, you're using all of your actions, man. How are you doing all this stuff? Um, don't be hiding all this stuff. Look, all you gotta do is just get a gradient map. And all you have to do is just change the blend mode to soft light 
And the uh, gradient map that I'm using here is in this legacy gradient stuff. So don't get all mad because there's going to be that one person that's going to be all mad that I'm using my actions, but I use my actions. So I have to do all these steps. Okay, calm down. So with that said, I added this gradient map because this adds some beautiful, gorgeous tone. And I'm looking at the image. I'm like, oh, it looks good. Right. But now it's a little bit too dark. Right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask. I'm going to press control I because right now it's showing everywhere. White means it's showing everywhere. I'm going to press control I. And now I've inverted it. So it's black. Now what that means is I want to get the brush, set it to white so that I can specifically brush in where I want, which in this case, I want to darken the bottom part of the image once again. So I can put a little bit more attention to the subject. So I'm just darkening it up down here just a little bit. And then I want this cheekbone to be a little bit darker as well, just to add a little bit of depth. So I don't want to darken up the background here. All right. This part's very important because whatever, whatever is further away from the camera should have less contrast and should have less vibrancy. So in a little bit, I'm going to show you a little trick so that I can make it feel like it's popping out, like she's popping out from the background. So if I show you the before and after, this is just darkening it up here. So what's closest to the camera should have more contrast and should have more color. What's further away from the camera should have less vibrancy and less contrast. So basically what I did this for was just to add nice contrast to the foreground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my other action that I do here, red luminance. This is just a subtle effect that I like to add to my images. And in this case, I drop this down to 25%. Now this step is not necessary. So once again, I know somebody's going to be like, you're using your actions, man. Relax. It's not going to make that big of a difference. It's just something that I like to add to my images. It's not completely necessary. So I've already added that. And then one of the next steps that I want to do is that I want to make a new layer. And I want to set the blend mode to soft light. And the reason why I want to do this is that I want to sample some of this color. I see some of this oranges in the image. And I want to make it brighter. Okay, I want this the saturation to pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get my color picker. And I'm going to select that orange. And this is the orange that it is right now, right? I want more vibrant. So I'm going to bump this up. And I'm going to get the brush tool. And I'm going to lower the, the flow to about five. And so I want to just slowly start brushing in on some of these little areas here just to add a little bit more color to the image, all right? Now, I don't want to go too far. Once again, I don't want to go all the way far back here because that's going to be, I'm going to be lowering the contrast and the colors back there in a little bit. So just adding a little bit of color. So if I hit the before, this is the before and after. Let me zoom in to the main area that I'm doing it to. And this is just a small detail. This is completely not necessary. This is just something that I like to do. And so before and then the after. Now we're on to the last step, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, I lied. There's two more steps, two more steps. But I'm going to go ahead and make a new adjustment layer. And we're going to go to curves. Now, this is one of the more important steps. So don't tune out yet. There's two important steps here. We're going to add one more final color grade. And this is where we're going to make the image feel more three-dimensional. I'm going to go to my curves layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little point here. And I'm going to raise up this area here. And what you'll see is as I'm doing this, this is reducing contrast. Okay, so as I lifted that up, it is reducing the contrast. So look at the background, look at the overall image, especially back here, you'll see that I'm reducing the contrast. And so if I hit control I on the keyboard, because I don't want this to happen to the overall image, right? Because I added color here, I've added contrast, I've, I've done all this work to the face, and now it's just removing it all. I'm going to press control I on the keyboard. I'm going to get the brush tool and I'm going to maybe put it like at 10% flow. And I simply only want to do this to the background here. And once again, this is reducing the color and the contrast so that the subject can pop. So this is the before and then the after. So very, very, very subtle effect, but it'll help you make your images pop. Now, on the last one, as I looked at this image, the, after I was done editing it, I felt like, man, I really still want to push the colors. So I added one final selective color adjustment layer. So I'm going to come back to selective color, go to the adjustment layer, selective color. And then I came back and worked on my reds, which I did negative three. 
I did five and one and three. And so just looking at what the reds do, it's just doing, it's very, very subtle. Man, I'm, I wish you guys could see this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on your screens if you're on a phone or on a certain computer, but on my monitor, I can see just a beautiful, subtle difference, just the right balance that we need. Then we're going to go into the yellows. I'm going to go negative two. And my monitor is calibrated, by the way. I have a BenQ monitor. And I think that step is very important. So I've already added another adjustment with my yellows. And then I came back. And then with my neutrals, I went to one, two, and then one. And then, of course, keep in mind on this step here, guys, on this last color grade, you guys can add more if you want. So I'm going to leave it right about here. And this, this is... This is the part where I feel like it's balanced out really well. I can push the colors if I wanted to. So this is before and the after. Very subtle. Added just a little bit more red tones in the face, a little bit more tone to the background. And if I wanted to, if you guys want, when you're editing your image, if you want to add more color, by all means do so. I'm going to duplicate it just to see what it looks like. I haven't done this before. I'm just going to try it out. I'm going to duplicate it. And damn, I kind of like that actually. If I wanted to, I could reduce the opacity. I feel like it's a little too much. Maybe go 50%, half of that. And so before and then the after. So overall, this is the before and after, ladies and gentlemen. That's the whole edit. If we look at, let me go ahead and scroll down and we'll look at the entire, um, what am I trying to say here? We'll look at the entire uh, layer stacking that we did. So let's hold Alt here. I'm going to go before and then the after. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. And let me go ahead and turn off this last one that I did just in case I went overboard because sometimes I get all hyped up and then I'm like, what was I thinking? So I'm going to just take it off. So this is the before once again. And then this is the after. And let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And let's build it up from the beginning. So frequency separation and dodge and burn. So frequency separation, dodge and burn. The selective color layer. The selective color on just the background. Then we got into the ROM. Then we added a little bit of contrast with the gradient map to the bottom part. Let me scroll down just a little bit. Then I added my red loom, which is totally not necessary. So if you don't have that action, don't worry. Then I added the soft light layer to just add a little bit more color, brushed it in. I added a curves adjustment to soften up the contrast and color back there, so before, after. And then I finished it off with another selective color. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was highly requested on Instagram, and I cannot stress enough, guys, if you enjoy my work and my photos, if you want to see the behind the scenes, don't forget to check me out on Instagram. And if you enjoyed this full edit, I do have over 15 full edit tutorials on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one. I didn't like that ending. I usually say have a beautiful day and then I end it like that. You know what? Nobody's probably watching at this point. I don't think anybody watches. It's like I look at the analytics. Okay, there's like only five or 10% are looking at this. Let me try this again. You guys have a beautiful day and I will see you on the next one.